Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Alisa here. Now the short story goes like this. Today we have a very fun, quick and easy project, sort of like one size fits all, so you don't have to figure out much. Could be a really great beginner project as well. So I hope this will give you that creative courage, maybe will bring you your sojo back. But long story goes like this. I have a friend who is an amazing human being, super talented, very kind. She bought this sort of like cardigan slash overlay I would say about two years ago or so. She wears them quite often when she does her farmer's markets. And then on my end, I have a couple of cuts of fabric that would be perfect for this, but I know that I won't be using these fabrics anytime soon, if at all. So I thought, why not we combine the two of these, make something beautiful for my friend, make a tutorial for you guys. So without any further ado, Let's get started. The size of this ready to work cardigan is large to extra large, and we're going to be using this exact sizing, but I wanna put it on myself so that way you can see that it is really easy to make one. Wanna make it longer, make it longer. Wanna make it wider, make it wider. It only has a couple of seams. It's really easy to wear. You will most probably see something like this during summertime. It has this sort of like bohemian vibe, but the main idea here is that you want to choose fabric with the drape. So you can use something a little bit thicker as an overlay for winter, but it has to drape really nicely. Otherwise, you're just gonna look like a big square block. I have these two chiffon fabrics that have been asking to become something beautiful for a while now. Look at this print. <laughs> Isn't it fun? And then I have another one that is also equally as beautiful. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to measure this real quick and then I'm going to give you the action plan. Basically, it's just a really large rectangle which makes it really easy. The total length is 66 inches, the front is 33, the back is 33, and the width is all together 40 inches. You know what, it turns out that I have just enough, literally just enough to make lengthwise to make one of these. I guess it's our lucky day today. So first I'm going to cut my rectangle, which is 66 inches long and 40 inches wide. And I'm also going to tidy up all of the raw edges so that way they're nice and neat. Okay, that is done. This is the next thing that we're going to do. We're going to take our fabric, all right? This is how we would fold it if the shoulder seams are going to be right over here. So this is how it's gonna go on our body. So this is how we want to fold it in half. So we want to double check that the bottoms are even, all right, on one side and on the other side. There we go, I'm holding it by the side right now, by the side seam. Now we we'll want to put it on the table like that and I want to bring it in and fold it in half. For the neckline, I made this really easy drafting. It's two and a half inches wide one inch down, and then go ahead and connect it with a curved line just like you see it on your screen. I have cut this out and I'm going to place it like so at the center back. So this is center back and center fold. As you can see, there's no raw edges. This is folded. These folds right over here are going to be your shoulder seams, and these raw edges over here are going to be your side seams. And here I'm cutting through both layers. Once we have cut away the neckline, let's go ahead and lay this flat. Now is the time to decide which is going to be the front and the back. I have decided that this part is going to be my front, so here I only want to take one layer of fabric, and um, I did pin it together so that way it wouldn't move. But from the very top of this corner over here, and this will work on chiffon and other lightweight fabrics, but you have to test your fabric first. I'm going to make a little cut like that because I'm going to rip it here. And I'm also going to do exactly the same thing here. Again, I pinned it so that way it wouldn't move. At the very top, I'm just taking a straight perpendicular line down just through one layer of fabric only because we don't wanna cut the back. And now, I'm just gonna go ahead and go ahead and rip it on both sides. And this is what we 
we have now? Looks familiar, right? <laughs> this is where your head is gonna go like that. All right, we're on to the hemming, and here I have to say that this is probably the most time-consuming part out of this entire project. And I also need you to know a couple of things. Number one, it will all depend on what kind of fabric you're working with, and number two, of course, it will depend on your skill level and on your pace of work. So for me, hemming one of these cardigans with a rolled hem or a double-fold hem is just about an hour worth of work. For you, it might be a little bit longer. But let's say you're working with a double brushed polyester knit, a fabric that what, once you cut it, it doesn't fray, it doesn't unravel. And in this case, you might just want to cut it accurately and neatly and leave it as is. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that it's one of the options depending on what material you're working with. Now here I'm working with chiffon. So my choice is going to be sort of like a hybrid between a double fold and a rolled hem. I'm going to be doing that on a sewing machine just with a regular presser foot and it's pretty easy and straightforward. And there's at least five different other ways how you can hem it depending on the fabric that you're working with. So I will leave them for you guys in the info box below so that way you can take a look and choose the right one for you. So what I do here is really straightforward. This is the cut edge of my project. I'm going to fold it in once by about one eighth of an inch and then I'm going to fold it in another time and that's how it's going to go underneath the presser foot of my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on the folded edge that's away from the edge of the fabric and that's about it. When I start on the very edge, I don't back stitch so that way my sewing machine doesn't chew up my fabric, especially when I'm working with something lightweight like that. And I also don't pin it in place uh, because it's just really easy to roll it like that. You will notice that I'm holding fabric here with my other hand and it might look like I'm pulling on it, but actually I'm using this as sort of my steering wheel so that way it's really easy for me to get that really nice and straight stitch. Here's an extra tip. If you're having a really hard time getting that stitch nice and even at the very beginning because your sewing machine likes to chew up your fabric, first of all, of course, check the needle that your needle is not dull and that you're using appropriate needle for appropriate fabric. But if you're still having some troubles, a little piece of tissue paper might help. Just place it as sort of like your starter underneath your project as you start sewing. After that, you can just tear it away and that's it. All right, once the hem is done, we are on the last and final step. What we want to do is we want to take the bottom hem, the front and the back, and we want to match them. And then we want to make sure that we have a matching shoulder seam right over here. So here is the fold. Here are the uh, two cut hems. And from the shoulder, so this is going to be like this, right? So from the shoulder down, we want to measure approximately 10 inches. So 10 inches down and it's going to look like so. So we're measuring 10 inches down and then we want to measure about two inches in, make a little mark. And then from there, two inches down from that point and those two inches are going to be that little straight seam or a zigzag seam, depending on what type of fabric you're using, that is going to sort of hold the sleeve opening in place. You're going to repeat that on both sides, so make sure that they're symmetrical and the seams match. And here, just because I'm going to be using black thread because that's what I was using for hemming, I'm actually going to scoot a little bit deeper than two inches so that way my seam ends up within these other black designs so that way it's just concealed and not as visible. And also, here's an extra tip. If your fabric allows it, and mine is a little bit too lightweight and see-through for that, I would cut a little strip of medium weight interfacing and I would interface that spot where you're going to be doing that stitch so that way you know for sure it's nice and secure because if anything if you tug on anything that seam is going to be under a lot of stress and in my case you know what I think I might be doing I might do two seams just about a quarter of an inch apart from each other so that way the pressure is distributed in case if anything happens well <laughs> obviously these are from my friend but I I wanted to put them on so that way you can see the flow of the fabric, you can see how it fits on my size, and basically that's all there is to it. Now here's an extra idea. If you want, you can put two buttonholes through both of the layers on one side, one buttonhole, and one buttonhole on the other side, and put a belt through it. I actually have a video of a very similar design, but instead of making a cover-up or a stylized cardigan, we're making a blouse. So definitely check it out right over here. We go 
through measuring and cutting and sewing so you'll see that over there thank you so much for watching i hope that this gave you a bit of joy a bit of uh, creative juice and i'll see you very soon in another video bye